So the first active recovery session I want to do is the one dedicated to the running. And so we're going to start in a seated position. And if you're a little bit tight in your hips, feel free to grab your blanket, maybe even fold it over. You sit on top of that thing, that's going to give you a little advantage. The higher your hips, the more easily you'll be able to come to a seated pose. If this is uncomfortable, feel free to keep your legs extended. Or one thing I like, if you're super tight, is just to put your elbows around your knees so you can stay upright in your spine like that. The most important part is that we're just grounded and we're seated. With yoga, uh, everything's associated with an element. And this first practice is associated with the ground element. As you're running, you're really literally running on the ground. So we want to be connected to the floor. Let's think about that as we go through our practice today. And we ground ourselves down as we stretch through our muscles. One of the really important ways that we can enhance our sport through the practice of yoga is really mastering what happens with our breath. Breath is very closely aligned with our nervous system and energy. So the first thing I want to do is a calming breathing style called whisper breath. In Sanskrit, that's called ujjayi. It's pretty simple. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice, but we're simply going to breathe in and out through our nostrils with a little whisper in the back of our throat. Okay, so see if you can do this. Soft through the jaw, we're going to breathe in through the nostrils and back out through the nostrils. With a little whisper in the back of the throat, this is going to elongate our breath. Keep going. This is going to help us expand our lung capacity as well as calm our nervous system. So just for a couple moments here, inhale and exhale through your nostrils and practice this whisper style of breath. The other breathing exercise that I want to do really quickly before we jump into the physical part of our practice is what's called breath of fire. This is a breathing exercise that allows us to expand our capacity and raise our energy. And essentially what we're going to do is breathe in these short, quick spurt exhales out our nostrils like this. Now I'm breathing in in between every one of those breaths, but I'm just emphasizing the exhale. So see if you can do this with me. I'm going to do a round of 25, and then you can do another round of 25 on your own. You can push pause on this and do this. But here's what this looks like. Let's try this. And then just go back to that ujjayi breath, that slow whisper breath, in and out through your nostrils. Sometimes that can make us a little bit lightheaded, so we want to make sure we take a couple of slow, deep breaths afterward. But again, this is going to get some energy moving through our body. Okay? So let's incorporate that whisper breath as we do our yoga poses. The first thing I want to do as we start off this thing is a way of mobilizing some of our uh, muscles in our legs. So I'm going to invite you to come to a hands and knees pose. So I'm going to start here with my shoulders right over my wrists, my hips over my knees, and with an inhale, lift my chest up, arch my back some, and exhale, round my back, draw my tail back under. Inhale again as the heart goes forward and the sits bones lift, and exhale. And inhale. And the next time you exhale, curl your toes under, and with really bent knees, Press into a downward facing dog pose. Let your head relax in between your biceps. With your knees bent, then start to pedal back and forth and keep your deep breath moving in and out. If you're flexible enough to bring both heels to the floor, great. Generally, you want your hands about shoulder distance apart and you want your feet about hip bone distance apart. I'd actually rather see a straight spine and bent knees than a rounded back. Okay, so if you need to, keep it like this. This is perfect, this is perfect yoga, okay? Now, on the inhale, look forward to your hands and step your feet forward like this in a high squat position. We're going to inhale and bend our knees like this. Point your butt back, lean your chest forward. And then when you exhale, we're going to straighten our legs some and round your back. I'm not interested in straight legs unless that's really comfortable for you, okay? Inhaling again, bend your knees, open your chest, and exhale, straighten it out. We're warming up our quads. Top thigh muscles, our hamstrings, back of the thigh muscles, calf muscles, and the tibialis anterior. These are our front shin muscles. All these are super important 
to be able to run effectively. Okay? So we're just putting a little blood flow through these things, back and forth. And then as you inhale, bend your knees a smidge, open your arms, stand all the way up. As you exhale, bring your hands together back down to your chest. Okay, we're going to run through a couple of half sun salutations. As you inhale, open your chest, raise your arms up, touch your hands. On your exhale, lean forward. Bend your knees if you need to. Inhale, find a flat spine and fold forward again. Follow your whisper breath. Inhale, big breath in, just reach all the way up. And as you exhale, bring your hands together back down to your chest. Okay? This next is called Sun Salutation A. Everybody inhale, reach your arms to the sky. When you exhale, fold forward. Come up to a flat spine again. Now check this out. We're going to move to an upper push-up position on our yoga mat or on the floor, whatever. So we're like this. Feel free to bring your knees to the floor if you need to, if you've got a bum shoulder or wrist. And as you exhale, we're going to lower down. Chest almost touches the ground. As you inhale, roll your shoulders back. Open up your heart. Now this is a pretty deep back bend. And if this hurts your back, bring your hips and belly down to the floor. I'm more interested in how the shoulders are working here. Okay? Inhale here. The next time you exhale, curl your toes under. And let's press it back into a downward facing dog pose. Right? So my heels can touch the floor. It only took me about seven years to figure out how to do that. Right? And if that's not you, don't worry about it. Keep your knees bent. Keep your butt pointing straight up to the sky. Look forward. Inhale and step your feet forward. Then breathe in again as you lengthen out to a flat spine. Exhale as you fold forward. Bend your knees a smidge. Stand all the way up. And again, bring your hands together back down to your chest. Okay, one more time, just like that. Inhale, raise your arms up. I'm going to show you the side view of this whole thing. Fold forward. As you breathe in, flat spine. Knees maybe a little bent. Step back to an upper push-up pose. Lower down on your exhale, lower push-up. Then move to cobra or upward facing dog. This is this big heart opener. Feels good. Downward facing dog as you exhale. Now as you breathe in, we're going to bend our knees and look forward. Step your feet forward. So give yourself a nice big inhale here. Long exhale. Relax your neck and your shoulders. The next time you inhale, stand all the way back up. And then hands together, back down to your chest. The next pose I want to do is a standing pose. We're going to bend our knees, pull our hips back like this. Okay, get your deep breath moving. Pick up your right ankle and place it on top of your left thigh. Keep your toes flexed. So there's a group of muscles on the outside of your hip called your external hip rotators, and these classically get tight for runners. So we, I do this a lot of times after a run, and I'll hold on to a tree if I'm trail running or onto my car or something, and I'll just pull my hips back and I get this great stretch here. I'm also feeling a balance on this left leg. It's strengthening my ankle and my shins. So I can go as deep as I want and feel good with this thing. I'm going to keep that deep breath moving. Okay, so this is all about balance too. So if you end up falling over, it's not a big deal. Just jump back in and try it again. Let's switch sides. Flex your toes back toward your shin. Pull your hips back. I think it's like my favorite thing to do right after a run. You know, just hold on to a tree, pull this thing. It's a great stretch for these muscles on the outside of the hip. They get so tight. Okay? And from here, after you've done that on both sides, shake it out. Bring everything together. Your ankle bones touch. Strengthen your abdominals. Get long. And then slide your right leg up either into your ankle or into your calf. Don't push into your knee because it's a volatile joint. You don't want to push into that thing. We need our knees to do all the stuff we want to do. Put your foot into your inner thigh if you're flexible enough to do so and squeeze that together. Sit up straight and tall and then reach to the sky. Keep your breath going. You know, I run a lot of trails and this more than anything else has worked to strengthen my ankles and my calves and my feet better than anything. Okay, so this is you know, incorporating not only a balance, but really doing some refined work for the strength and the proprioceptors. These are how our feet negotiate on the ground. Okay, so other side, when you're ready, pull it together. Find one thing to look at. Bring it up into your inner thigh. Okay? Find your, your center and then reach. Now just focus on the foot that's on the ground. Keep your breath going. And then after a couple of these, bring it back down and check it out.
okay? Big inhale, reach your arms to the sky. Bend your knees a little bit. On the exhale, slow forward fold. This feels great after running for a while. Takes all this tension out of my lower back. And again, bend your knees as much as you'd like to. Feel your feet root down onto the floor. So all four corners of the feet root down. Relax here. Okay, just give yourself a couple of deep breaths. And then when you're ready, put your palms back down. Step back into a downward facing dog pose. And remember, it doesn't matter to me if your knees are bent or your legs are straight, okay? Find whatever's comfortable. That's our whole objective. Find that comfortable edge. And then when you're ready to, we're gonna come back to a kneeling position. Step your right foot in front. And if your knees are super sensitive, you can grab your blanket here and put that underneath your knee to give yourself a little bit of extra cushion. So you want your left hip directly over your knee, extend your right leg forward, and then as you lean forward, you're gonna organize so this knee is right over this ankle. From there, push your hands in, into your knee, lift your chest up, roll your shoulders back. I get this fantastic stretch in the left groin. Those are the hip flexors, the psoas muscles. And if you love this and wanna go deeper, interlace your fingers, reach your arms up to the sky, keep that breath going, and then push your toes into the floor for this awesome stretch on the left groin. And then from here, after you've had a couple of those, remove your blanket. I'm gonna lean over to the side, bend my left knee, grab hold of that foot. This can be intense. Pull that heel into your glute. And open this thing up. And if you love this and you wanna go even deeper, drop onto your elbow. And this really stretches those quads in a great way. Okay, so let's grab our blanket again. I'm gonna put this underneath my left knee. Straighten up my right leg. Flex your toes back toward your shin, but push through the ball of your foot. This is gonna make your quads and your hamstrings active, as well as your shins and your calves, before we then start to slowly lean forward. Find a comfortable stretch. Like I said, I'm not really interested in the most intense stretch you could possibly do. When we run, these things get super tight, and if we just try to crank on those, they're going to resist. We're gonna pull muscles. That's gonna put us out of the game. Instead, we want that gentle, slow ease into this thing, and keep your deep breath moving in and out. Remember, our muscles need oxygen to do what we're asking them to do. Then after a few breaths, we're gonna ease our way back out of this thing. Maybe come to a hands and knees pose for a second before we move back to downward facing dog pose. Let your head relax, knees bent or legs straight. When you're ready, we're gonna look forward, inhale, bend your knees, step your left foot forward, place your right knee down to the floor, okay? Now again, my hip is gonna go right over my knee and then I'm gonna extend my left leg forward. From here, bend your front knee. So again, knee comes over ankle. This is an important alignment principle in our yoga practice. Align joint over joint. The more we can get this vertical relationship with gravity, we're gonna bear our weight most effectively to the floor. Right? This session is all about grounding. So I wanna figure everything's super grounded to the floor. Now my hands are, can stay here on my thigh. My hands can reach up to the ceiling. You'll also notice that if your tailbone draws down, pubic bone lifts up, that's gonna punctuate that stretch in your right psoas muscle. That's your hip flexor, okay? Lift this thing up, couple of deep breaths here. And then when you've had a good run with this, put your right hand to the floor, step it over the right a little bit, bend your right knee, see if you can reach back and grab hold of that foot and pull it in toward your glute some. Okay, a couple of deep breaths. Now those of us who don't stretch a bunch are gonna find a rude awakening here. No big deal, right? Just take this to whatever degree works for you. If it works, drop onto your elbow. Tilt your head back. Your head tilting back creates this chain reaction that moves through your spine, the bottom of which is your hip crest where that quadricep muscle connects. So you get a big stretch there. Then when the love is gone from that pose, pull it into this thing. Flex your toes back. Again, use your blanket if you want. We're gonna fold forward as we find a stretch, particularly in our hamstrings. I also get a big stretch in my calves because that's where I'm the tightest here. But you notice my foot? I'm pushing through the ball of my foot and flexing my toes back to activate all these muscles so they're contracting at the same time that I'm stretching. Big breath in. 
Long exhale. Okay. Now from here, we'll bring it all back to middle. Down dog is sort of like ground zero, base camp, if you will. We'll hang out here for a sec. And then I'm going to organize this into a really important pose. From here, we're going to go into pigeon pose. So first of all, I'm going to bring my front knee forward. And this is a great time to use my blanket or my block. I can fold this thing over, put it underneath my hip, and sit back on my, on my hip like this. Now, if this is really sensitive to your knee, you're going to remove this and instead do the lying on the back version. Bend your knees, flex your right toes back toward your shin. With your right hand, reach through, interlace your hands around your shin, and then gently pull that back in toward your thigh. And I get this great stretch here in these external hip rotators. Those are the guys that, su that get super tight when we run, okay? Now, if you're okay with the other version, we'll come back into our pigeon pose where I have my leg in front, my other leg in back. If I'm flexible, I can put this shin so it's almost parallel to the front of my yoga mat. Okay, I'm gonna get this hip as much as I can down to the floor. You notice also my toes are flexed. Deep breath in. These are the muscles that get the most tight when we run. So if we were to do just one or two stretches at the end of our run, this would be one of them. This is gonna be a pretty intense stretch. My shin is almost parallel to the front of my yoga mat. I can start to walk my elbows forward if that feels good, okay? Your pose is supposed to look different than my pose. Everybody's body's a little bit different, okay? And we'll hold this for four or five breaths. Keeping everything active. When you've had a good amount of time here, we're gonna walk our hands back toward our shin, come back to a hands and knees pose. If it feels good, press into a downward facing dog position. Then let's look forward and place our left knee forward. Okay. So again, I'm going to take the first second or two to calibrate this pose. I might lean over onto my hip and bring this forward, or maybe put my blanket underneath my hip, right? Keep my toes flexed. The flexing of the toes creates a contraction on my lower legs so that I don't overstretch the ligament on the outside of my knee, so I keep good knee health. And then I can hang here or start to bring my hands forward. Remember the lying on the back version we did on the other side? You can always do that if that works better for you. Deep breath. So there's a million things we can think about in this pose. N number one is how intense this is. Go with it. Put your attention right where your hip is. Keep that breath moving slowly in and out. Okay? And then after we've had a good amount of time here, we're going to slowly bring this back, remove our thing, and then come to a seated position facing forward. This is a really nice place to grab your blanket again and put this underneath your sits bones, especially if you're a little bit tight. Feet together, knees wide, sit up straight, and then as you exhale, we we'll lean forward. Another set of muscles that get super tight when we run are our adductors. These are the inner thigh muscles, right? So as they pull in, I lean forward, I get a little stretch there, and then I'm going to start to round my shoulders and lean forward into this deep breath in. Long breath back out, creating that mind-body connection and infusing our breath into every posture. We'll go just a little bit deeper. Okay. Now from here, after we've had a couple of breaths, let your shoulders relax, let your face relax. We'll come back upright and extend our legs forward. Okay. For, for this, again, if you're tight, sit up on the edge of this thing or start to lean forward. Okay, if you can touch your toes, more power to you. If that's not you, then bend your knees a little bit. Okay, and come forward gently. I'm looking for a stretch right in the belly of the muscle. So not in the attachments, right? These are my tendons. And I don't want to stretch tendons, I want to stretch your muscles. So if that means bending your knees, great. Give yourself a couple more slow breaths here. Relax your shoulders, relax your head. And just feel what's going on, you know? Bit by bit, your muscles are gonna relax and invite you to go a little bit deeper. And we've had a good amount of time here. I'm gonna come back upright, okay? Now, here comes the important moment. We need to make friends with this guy, the foam roller, okay? 
This is the best thing we can do to keep our legs in great shape so that we don't overuse our muscles. We're gonna put our foam roller like this. I'm gonna saddle up next to this thing. And we are going to roll along the IT band. This is the iliotibial band. This is a band of fascia or connective tissue that runs from your hip all the way down to the outside of your knee. It gets super tight when we run and can cause problems for your knees. So if you hang out on this thing, you can keep your foot on the floor or lift your feet up off the ground. We're gonna use our arms to slow motion, roll down the length of your IT band all the way to the outside of your knee and then roll back up to your hip. Okay, a couple of times back and forth like that. You know, right at the end of your run, your muscles are warm, they're ready to receive that elongation. And then from here, we're gonna roll gently just over to the top of your thigh muscle, the top thigh muscle quadriceps as you start to move forward and back. Before we end up doing the same thing on the other side. And I'll just start right on the quads on the left side. Back and forth a few times before I roll all the way over and hit the IT band on that other side. When you've had a good run with that thing, you're probably really happy to put that thing away. But again, regular use of the foam roller is gonna keep you in the game for a long time. So let's finish our practice with a few twists. We're gonna come down to a lying on our back position. Scoot your hips over toward your uh, left a little bit, and then we're gonna drop our knees both over to our right. See if you can keep that right shoulder blade on the ground and give yourself a couple of those long, slow whisper breaths here. I'm gonna give yourself about five long breaths per side. Okay, and it's not a big deal if you need to pull your knees away from your chest to accommodate for not so much flexibility or knees closer to chest for more flexibility. On an exhale, we're gonna switch sides and bring both of your knees over toward the other side and reach, keep that right shoulder blade on the ground and give yourself the same amount of time. A couple of long, full, deep breaths here. Okay, your head can be neutral. You can look over to that right side. We're gonna bring our knees back up. So when we've twisted about equal amount of time on both sides, then we're gonna get ourselves ready for a rest. And what I would suggest is grabbing your blanket and putting that either behind your head or underneath your knees Let's balance out the physical part of our run and our practice, which is lying on our back, closing our eyes. Give yourself about you know, five minutes here to just totally relax and let go. Let your nervous system totally relax. And I invite you, as you do this, to practice some of the mindful techniques that we'll talk about in the audio portion of Prana Try. Thank you for joining me in the running portion of our active recovery practice. By regularly moving through these stretches and these poses, it'll greatly improve our running.